there is actually one golden rule that, silly as it may sound, applies to all esports and is actually really good advice. Don't die. From the filthy casual to the seasoned professional, everybody knows the importance of staying alive. No, no, I don't want to die again. <laughs> but what if there was an exception to the rule? What if there was a way to feed over and over again and still come out on top? Well, that's a concept upon which Simon the Baus FFS Hofferberg has built his entire League of Legends streaming career. <laughs> he did fall for it? Ah, cringe, man. That's just cringe. <laughs> Wait, do you want a game with 0-9? Question mark? It's kind of what I do. It's kind of what I do. I int my ass off, and then I still win. You see, for the Baus, not all deaths are bad. In fact, for him, a good death is his most powerful weapon. Four levels up on- Wow! Wait, Baus, did you TP here to die? Oh, tactical! You don't know who the Baus is, buddy! Usually what he does is he tries to become the biggest pest in the game. He potentially is the biggest pest in League of Legends because all he does is go for your goddamn towers and your objectives. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but perhaps the craziest thing is that in spite of his countless deaths, the Baus plays at the highest level of solo queue in League of Legends. No! Damn, let's go! I f did it! You damn right! You damn right! I do it! I do it! It's piss easy for me, baby! So, the question, naturally, is how can someone who dies so much be so good? Why does his approach to the game make him a contentious figure in League's community? And more importantly, how is he shaping the very language of League of Legends? Solo Bolo! Alright guys, so before we dive into the Baus, I just wanted to let you all know that we have partnered with our friends over at Predator Gaming to bring you a holiday gift guide. And to run you through his own wish list, I'm going to send you over to the SCORE Esports' resident dank meme lord, Josh Burry. Like Dimitri just said, we've teamed up with our friends at Predator Gaming to bring you a holiday gift guide that'll give you some insight into what I'm hoping to pick up this holiday season, and who knows, maybe it'll inspire your wish list as well. So let's get into it. Listen, it's important to be comfortable at your desk. And recently a few of you noticed that my chair seemed to be a bit tilted. Rest in peace, Marcus. Chairs seem to be one of those things where it's just worth it to spend a little bit of extra money to get something that lasts. One option I've been thinking about is the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022. It seems unlikely that Santa would be able to bring me a whole new back for Christmas, so a quality chair has to be the next best thing, right? While it's important to always be comfortable when you're at your desk, there are only so many hours I can spend there before I need a change of scenery but I don't want to sacrifice performance when I'm on the go. Thankfully, our friends at Predator Gaming have my back. Sporting an Intel 11th Gen H-Series Core i7 processor and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti GPU, the Predator Triton 300 SE lets me play Final Fantasy XIV wherever I happen to be at that moment. You can find one of these bad boys at your local Best Buy. Now, let's get back to the episode. Okay, so who exactly is this so-called Scion feeder making waves in League of Legends? Well, the Baus hails from Kungsängen, a small suburb of the Swedish capital, Stockholm. As a kid, he first played console games 
hours and spent hours watching his brother, surprise, surprise, play World of Warcraft. But when he got his first computer at the age of six, he started upon his own adventure. But it was when young Simon made the move to League of Legends that he began to form his now iconic identity. Yeah, I wanted to be recognized, so I was like, the mouse, that, 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 people would recognize that. And then I spell it a bit weird with the A and the U. And then, of course, during that time, it was very common to put like LOL and like these kind of stuff. So I put FFS because that was the one I thought was the best. And then it, it just, it has been with me ever since then, I guess. All throughout high school, the Baus continued to play League, and after he graduated, he was determined to stream the game professionally, which he pitched to his parents. They were trying to get me to college or get me, get me, um, to work somewhere and I, I was gonna do that I, I'm not I'm not uh, against it but I I came with a proposition that I sat down with my parents and I said I am good at this game I want one year and if I don't make it I'll go to college and I'll do something with my life but I just need one year so, with the blessing of his parents and the help of his brother, the Baus officially launched his Twitch channel in August of 2018. Now, the Baus had been playing League since the middle of Season 2, and originally gravitated towards champions like Blitzcrank and Thresh. But his streaming career really began to take off because of how he played one champion in particular, Sion. A character who loves nothing more than smashing into enemies with his unstoppable ult, knocking them up for days, and literally screaming minions into their faces. Making Scion even more intimidating to play against is his passive, which reanimates him upon death and exponentially increases his auto damage. How did he get here? Welcome to EU. Welcome to EU. <laughs> the Baus saw something in Scion that no one else did. Because while most people deploy him as a frontline tank, the Baus builds full balls to the wall attack damage so that he can demolish you or your turret with his passive, or charge into your base and destroy your nexus. He uses items like Prowler's Claw to dash behind you when he dies, and then drags you down with him. He builds Hull Breaker and takes Demolish, which help him absolutely melt structures. Put all of this together, and you've got possibly the cheesiest and most infuriating playstyle to go up against. It's so annoying when he has 20 deaths and he's just obliterating your Nexus. And it's like, you can't, I mean, you can kill him for the 20th time, but it's like, man, you kill him, he gets his passive, and then he just blows up your goddamn nexus. Four levels up on the- Wow! Wait, Baus, did you TP here to die? Oh, tactical! You don't know who the Baus is, buddy! Now he's gonna hit the tower, watch. Oh no, he's gonna go for more! Oh, the Prowler's Core Tech! No way, this is gonna triple! No way! No! Oh my- If a normal top laner is 0-10, they're standing at their tier 3, and they can't move, okay? They can't move. If Baus is 0 10, <laughs> he's proxying your whole family and he's taking your towers while he's 0 10. That's the difference between the Baus and normal top laners who are 0 10. They're hugging their tier 3s, praying for late game. The Baus is 0 20, taking your whole nexus. Now, despite the fact that his strategy is predicated on dying a lot, the Baus somehow wins more often than he loses, to the point where he's finished in challenger rank the past four seasons. So, how is this possible? How can someone die so often and yet consistently beat some of the best players on the planet? Well, that's because, for the Baus, it really doesn't matter how many times you die, as long as you die, a good death. Dying usually means you're doing something aggressive, right? It's very, very, very uncommon that you will see me die under my own turret, uh, playing defensive. So you play aggressive, right? And what happens is people pick up on all the times that I die when I play aggressive and, you know, oh, it's another good death, you know, he died. But people have a hard time picking up 
whenever the aggressive play works out, for example. I think that's a big thing that maybe I will die 5 out of 6 times, but then that one time that I kill him is a game changer and I proceed to win the game because of that play. I don't know how to explain it, I guess it's just I play way more aggressive and it, it works out. <laughs> Yes, he didn't flash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Good death. Good death. <laughs> In essence, the Baus is essentially the living embodiment of lose lane, win game. Like, even he's surprised when he finishes a match with a positive KDA. I've never been in this position where I win lane. <laughs> what the f***? What am I supposed to do now? What do you do when you win lane? Don't think you do this. <laughs> the thing is, not everyone has a good sense of humor about how the Baus approaches League. Even though his fan base has grown considerably over the years, so too has his number of critics, many of whom claim that he's a glorified griefer worthy of being permabanned. And unfortunately for the Baus, the Yokes temporarily came to an abrupt halt in January of 2021, when he was slapped with a ban from Riot for intentionally feeding. Although the ban was lifted and flagged as a mistake by Riot's game director, Mark Yetter, the Baus believes the motivations were a little more sinister. Basically, in High Elo, there are a lot of people that are not very liked. I think I'm one of them. <laughs> there are many people that dislike me straight up because of my playstyle. It's a small community, Hailo. We, we play with each other every day, the same people over and over again. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there are people that report me every single game, even if I play well. Yes, because they, they dislike me. But whichever side of the Baus debate you fall on, there's no denying that he has made a sizable impact on the League community. Not just for his in-game antics, but for his unique spin on common phrases like we're chillin' and GG. Ah. Easy, man. We shilling, guys. We shilling. Oh! Yes! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we <Enough> shilling. <laughs> yeah. Dude. We shilling, man. Like, I'm doing... I might be the biggest smurf on this f***ing planet, dude. Holy shit, we shilling. <laughs> Why? Oh my god. We shilling, guys. We shilling. End the game. End the game. <laughs> yee yee. Let's go. Yee yee. Yee yee. Get out of here. Easiest game of my life. Well, well, well. What a way to wrap up the day. Yee yee, man. Yee yee. But without question, the Baus's most famous quip has to be Solo Bolo. Ah, this guy's hinting. Solo Bolo! <laughs> oh, I really want to stack it. You killed him. What? What are you doing to them? You're not meant to kill them. You're not meant to kill them. They're getting... Dude. You're not meant... They're the, meant to kill you, if I'm, anything at all. I'm the Solo Bolo Master. Uh, and then finally, Solo Bolo. I think one of the most famous of your uh, terms. So is any solo kill a Solo Bolo? Solo Bolo. Yeah. Uh, no, there's rules, of course, to okay. a Solo Bolo. Um, first of all, no ally assistance. It's you and you alone. Uh, no teammate nearby. Second of all, if you if you're a if you're a Riven, you're a Camille, and and you kill a Yumi, that that's just a kill, you know. That's not really a solo bolo. There has to be some kind of fight. Solo bolo became bigger than the Baus ever could have imagined, especially when he famously crossed paths with legendary Korean top laner Khan in solo queue. Huge. Let's go, boys. That's huge. Nah, nah, he did not just say that, man. Nah, he did not just say that, dude. And it reached an even higher level of popularity when Chinese casters actually dropped it during a game at MSI. 
这里上路，哎，最后一丝血交闪了，小虎这边被打惨，在中路单杀了。Solo Bolo 在这么早的时间，三分钟不到就发生了吗 ？It was official. Baus Mania had truly taken over, and soon enough, his name was on the tip of everyone's tongues. Oh my God! That is the f boss. I was waiting for that. He is、yeah. so nutty. I didn't even know this was possible before I watched this play a month ago. No, no, no. this this play like actually. Yeah, I remember he、like, did it. So that's how he wins games, games, guys. Oh, bro, I was watching uh the boss, the bus, the bus, the trash play Chogath earlier while I was waiting in my meeting. That's some EU entertainment right there. I swear to God, that kid is horrible at Chogath. The Bows's surging popularity even landed him a guest analyst role during the LEC summer split. And despite some of the criticism that drew, he made the most of his chance to shine in the spotlight. For TLDR, for、Perfect. people、uh, who don't know you, can you describe yourself in like three words? I'm just a streamer,、uh, very bad at games, and that's what I'm known for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, whether you're a fan of his or not. The Baus has found a way to conquer League of Legends with one of the most unique playstyles the game has ever seen. You may not like it, but maybe this is what peak League of Legends looks like. Shake a one trick, bro. He knows how to get over the walls. Oh, oh he doesn't even need to see him. He doesn't even need to see him. He's got the glasses on. He's playing blindfolded. He's throwing the blind cues. Oh, he's the Baus for a reason. Sure, he dies shockingly often. More often than not, he gets that enemy nexus down first using every dirty scion trick in the book. Oh shit! Let's go, dude. That was that was close. And most importantly, he does it his way. You can try to be the greatest high death turret smashing undead. Pest that League of Legends has ever seen, but you'll never be the boss. Oh, the whole gang. Here we're driving. Okay, hello. What up, bitch? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> the f they think they're ganking on the bot lane. I go mid. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Pile, I die. Used to play for Cloud9, and he was the position for support. Who would roam around and just feed? He would sack his life to gain intel, and he would relay all this information to his team. And then every once in a while, they'd find him. And I remember it distinctly of casters being like, "Tactical feeding." Ah, yeah, they're laughing like it's tactical feed. It's good. It's good. Like it's right. That's what it came to mind for me. Was Pilei die with his tactical feeding?